So the three themes of the festival are extremely important more than any other time. We need to decolonize. If we are serious about decarbonizing and serious about climate justice, then we can't do it without decolonizing. And if we are serious about changing democracy and indeed injecting democracy here in Europe and across the world, then we have to decolonize and we have to put climate justice at the heart of our democratic process. So we have to dream big, we have to have uh, visions um, that include everyone. It's not about tinkering around the edges and trying to change a system. We have to literally start again because the systems that are, are in place are not working for anyone, but they're certainly not working for the most marginalised people in the world. When we are talking as activists, we need to understand that actually the doing matters just as much as the talking. So we have to have the language, we have to have the discourse to be able to shift the way that we're thinking uh, about the world and our place in it, um, but we also have to do. I'm here to talk about decolonizing. I, I do a lot of work around anti-racism. This word decolonizing doesn't actually mean much to anyone really because it's a word that's become a fashionable buzzword. So we have to deconstruct what it means. We have to go back to the roots of the word and the roots of the word go back to colonialism and they go back to empire. We are here at Porto University for this magnificent building. The legacy of Portugal's colonial project is everywhere and as is the uh, you know the, the scars and, and the evidence of ongoing racism so we must remember that you know thinking about things like co colonialism is not something from a long time ago colonialism is still alive and well it's still present as part of my presentation I've been looking at what words actually mean and how do we deconstruct these words and more importantly how do we put our values into action I've been really humbled by the conversations that we've had in these rooms over the past few days. I've been humbled by the presence of lots of people from all different walks of life, particularly younger people, and the future is in their hands. And I, what I see is much, much braver than previous generations. They've got a real understanding of intersectionality, what it really, really means. They understand that actually, if, if I want my rights, then everyone has to have their rights, otherwise I can't have my rights. And I think also the issue of climate justice, rightly so, is at the forefront of the younger generation's mind because frankly we are living in such dangerous times and they're the ones who are going to face the brunt of, of the threat. So I think all of that's been wonderful and I did also uh, talk about a campaign that I was uh, responsible for along with two of my wonderful friends in the UK. We call ourselves the three hijabis. We are three Muslim women wear, who wear the hijab. Uh, we stood up for our England national football team who are known as the three lions and we launched a petition uh, the day after the final of the um, Euros last year at Wembley Stadium which horrifically descended into a moment where racists in the UK felt that they were braver than ever, they were emboldened and they used this moment to attack three young black football players and as three women of colour we came together to stand up for these three young black British football players and that's what intersectionality is about. We need to understand that all our oppressions overlap. If we were three French Muslim women who wear the headscarf we would not have been able to access public political or media space in the way that we have in the UK and this is something we need to always remember as activists. You know some of us will have the privilege to access spaces, others won't, and we need to make sure that we remember those who don't and amplify their voices and their realities and demand justice for them as well. I am so happy that I travelled to Porto. Uh, I feel energised by everything that's taken place so far. I've been feeling very moved, I've been feeling very emotional. I feel very connected to everyone in the room. I've never met the people before, we've just spent a weekend together but it's been really empowering and I think the main thing I'm taking away is you know the absolute need for solidarity which I'm fully aware of but to actually be able to see people after the pandemic which we haven't actually come out of the pandemic we're still in the pandemic but to be able to meet people face to face and to be able to understand that even though we live different lives and different realities and in different parts of Europe we actually share a lot of similar values and we are fighting the same horrors. What's been so wonderful about this festival is it's, it's basically given us an opportunity to come together. Many citizens uh, and people across Europe have come together to have these conversations, to have these discussions, to share ideas, to share visions, um, to you know dream of creating a better world because it's through dreaming of creating a better world that we can put those dreams into action.